it's Emily from Life So Savory and I'm so excited to be back with you after um, a holiday break and then last week my schedule just not working out. So I'm here today and we're gonna be sewing up a really cute kids bathrobe and I'm very excited. So let me just do a couple of my shares here and then we're gonna go ahead and get started. I also wanna tell you about this sweatshirt that I'm wearing right now. Um, as we get into it because it will be one of my new free sewing patterns very soon on Life So Savory. So you're gonna want to not miss that information. And um, yeah, so let me just, again, I'm just doing a couple shares here. I'm gonna go ahead and get started. I'm so glad you guys are here and So I had originally said that when I came back, I was going to make a um, like a sack purse. And I, when I went, was prepping this last night, I went to get the fabric out that I thought I had for this to make a sack purse, and I realized I had sewed a skirt out of it, and I didn't have this scrap of fabric that I was envisioning to use to make this purse. So, um, anyway, we're switching gears, and we're gonna make a kid's bathrobe, and it's kind of a mash hack of a couple of my free sewing patterns, and I'll tell you exactly why we need, my daughter needs a new bathrobe um, here in just a second. So let me just do this real quick. I wanna make sure I share this to my sewing group. And do that. Um, okay, so we got, and actually we ordered it months and months ago, but it took a very long time to come because you know life right now. Um, and um, we, we got a hot tub. So it came just before Christmas, and then when we got back from our little Christmas um, road trip, we got it electricity hooked up and we got the chemicals organized. So just like less than a week ago, it's been going and we are using it. And anyway, my daughter has just been saying, I need a bathtub or I need a bathroom because it's out on the back deck. So she's, you know, we're going in and out. It's cold and wet. And so a bathroom would be really handy. So that's what I am um, going to be making today. But before that, let's quick talk about this awesome sweatshirt. So, um, I'll step back so you can see it's tunic length. Well, depending on how tall you are, but you could easily lengthen it. It has pockets and it has a cute cowl neck with um, optional ties if you want to cinch it up to be warm. It's cozy. Um, you can make it with sweater knit or this is out of sweatshirt fabric, sweatshirt fleece. So many options and it is, the pattern is going to be available free on my website on Friday. So mark your calendars, check back at Life So Savory on Friday and don't forget to download your copy of this awesome um, pattern. It's gonna be in sizes zero through about 22. So about my standard range and I know that it doesn't encompass everybody um, but it's what I can do. So yeah, this fabric is what's making it. And this is sweatshirt fleece from Raspberry Creek Fabric. But I also have a um, like sweater hakai version that is gorgeous as well. Uh, it's right here, let me show you. So uh, I sewed up a couple, a couple versions in my testing coordinating process, obviously, and so this one is like a Hakai sweater knit, and it is equally as lovely. Um, so it has split hem, pockets, and then the fun neckline. This one I put in grommets, and more like a shoelace. This one I did buttonholes, because that's easier. And I never know on the knit if the grommets are gonna hold, but I wanted to show both versions. So. 
Anyway, if you didn't catch me just a few minutes ago, I was saying that this is going to be a free pattern available on lifesosavory.com Friday morning, so US time. So mark your calendars, come back and download it on Friday. It's a fun sew. It's two to three yards of fabric. Again, it can be sweater knit, sweatshirt fleece, anything that has um, a bit of a stretch and um, it could be a fun something you can sew up this weekend. And I just love that it's long enough like here I'm wearing it with my athletic leggings um, and it really is long enough to kind of keep things covered but it's not too long and restricting so anyway that's a total side note um, but you guys should um, get that organized so okay today I said I was gonna sew a sack purse and I am next week after I make a fabric run uh, this Friday um, Fridays are usually a little bit of a down day for me because I usually publish a post or a pattern Friday morning and then I can publicize it, but then I have some time um, in the afternoon to get some things done. So this Friday I will be, um, I'm making a fabric run. I have a few things for fabrics and crafts I need to get. Um, and so I'm gonna buy more fabric because when I went to prep for, to make the sack purse that I said I was gonna make, um, I realized the piece of flannel that I was envisioning in my head, I had sewed a skirt out of. So I no longer had that piece of fabric. So today we are making, uh, and I didn't want to use this flannel that I'm making for this out of, into a bag. So I suppose, yeah, because it was, it's really, I just have bits and pieces. So I'm piecing this together, um, to make a, a cute flannel robe for my daughter and I am using my boys free t-shirt pattern and the hood add-on which is also available free on my website so I've linked to both those things you can also go to lifesosavory.com and search bathrobe and I will show you how I use those free patterns to create a bathrobe many years ago and this is another version that I'm I mean I'm just using that same concept today so this is the video version if you want the um, more step out, again, go to lifestosavior.com, search kids bathrobe. You'll find this tutorial in picture form using the same patterns that I'm using today and mashing them together. So what did I do to be able to use a t-shirt pattern to make a robe? First, I sized up. So if you have that luxury, if the pattern goes larger than your child is, I would size up one or two sizes because a bathrobe should be looser and baggier. And the original pattern was made for knit fabric and we are using a woven flannel that doesn't have stretch. So we need it to be bigger. So if your pattern is at the largest size, I would simply, because we don't need an exact fit on this, just draw the lines bigger um, and to enlarge it. But so I cut a size eight for my seven year old who normally, if I, if I was going for like actual fit, would probably size more like by the six. So size up one or two sizes and I cut two sleeves. And for the sleeves, I cut them pretty much straight down. I didn't taper in like you would on a t-shirt. So that's one edit. Here's the hood and this is just cut from the free pattern. I didn't really change this up. Uh, and then for the, <laughs> I had two pieced fabrics together because I didn't have anything long enough. Uh, the t-shirt, I'm lengthening several inches, like 10 inches to be able to um, make it more of a robe length, okay? So lengthen the t-shirt and again, sizing up. Now on the back piece, oh, I didn't cut this in half. On the back piece, like normal, we leave it on the fold, right? So this is the back of the bathrobe here, but on the front, which I didn't do, so I'll do it right now, you're going to want to cut it and then cut the front open. So not have it on the fold because we want, um, we're gonna put a facing on here to make it a little bit wider and to finish this raw edge. So I'm chopping this center fold open and for the front you will have two pieces, a left, and a right, okay? So there is the fronts of my bathrobe. And then we're gonna put a facing all the way up one side around the hood and down the other, and probably also around the bottom. 
Maybe also the arms, you can put facings or bindings wherever you want. So I cut strips of fabric that are two and a half inches wide by the width of my fabric and it's flannel, so they're not super wide. So we will have to join these together. But those are the pieces that I'm starting with and the patterns that I used to create those pattern piece, the fabric pieces and again, made from free patterns. I've done this before, it's super cute. It's also great with fleece. I just didn't have enough um, fleece to do this, but if you were wanting to make a cozy, a cozier bathrobe, um, then you definitely would want to, you know, you could use fleece. So this fabric is left over. You may recognize it from when I made a Christmas flannel blanket um, back around Christmas time. I'm just going to lower my camera a little bit. So my cover stitch is in the shop right now. So because that is not here, I pulled out my big machine that I normally keep downstairs, I'm trying to think. Um, and it's been fun to play around on that one a little bit more because yeah, it has some features that the machine that I, my smaller machine doesn't have, including directional stitching. I don't know if you saw my post um, about knee patches last week, but I use this one because not only does it sew forward and back, but it also has another set of feed dogs and it can sew side to side. So when you're sewing a square, you don't have to turn your fabric, it literally sews around. So it's been fun to um, have that one out and have a little more space here in my sewing area. Um, but we're gonna be able to sew this robe mostly entirely on the serger, which is fun because I like easy sewing like that. And I'm going to begin by sewing the shoulder seams. So let me put those together and grab a couple of clips here. So I'm matching the fronts onto the back and we're going to sew up those shoulder seams. We want this to be pretty large, so I'm gonna take a very small seam allowance and not really cut in um, to my fabric because again, I want this to be baggier and roomier because we're using a pattern that was made for knit fabric and now we're making it out of flannel. So we need that extra room. But this has this does work. So I would not, you can use any t-shirt pattern that you have, but I would use one that is made for a roomier fit. So if you have, like you notice, I'm not using my girls fitted t-shirt for this. I'm using the boys pattern, which is made to be roomier. So I would just, Take that into consideration if you're choosing a pattern to pack. Um, I've also, I did link my, the two free patterns of mine that I'm using um, for this, but you can really use the, the same process with any um, t-shirt pattern that you have. So right now I'm going to put the sleeves in and as you can see, I have a random assortment of coordinating fabrics they all go together but I only had about a quarter yard of several of them so this is gonna be a very mismatched um, sewing project here and none of it is uh, really matching now because we're easing in and this is not stretch fabric you might notice that the sleeve doesn't go as well into the armhole as it would if you were using knit fabric because there's no stretch. We can't really ease it in because this is flannel. So I'm gonna just take a slight tuck. That's gonna still allow that extra roominess in the shoulder and arm and give us the fullness of the sleeve without me really forcing it to fit. So um, I'm not gonna force it in, I'm just gonna use up that fabric and keep it by placing that small pleat at the top of the arm and keep going. So this is a very Christmassy looking uh, bathrobe here. You can see the fabric is, I mean, I we it's, it's plaid, right? It's, so we can say it's more winter, but it definitely is winter themed. And for those of you that missed 
the beginning I was saying we had we ordered actually it was the end of August but it just was delivered on December 23rd a hot tub for our backyard and for those of you who know we live in Colorado so it is chilly um, although not nearly as cold as the Midwest where I grew up for those of you who are checking in from Wisconsin and Michigan much more temperate climate here but we have so we then we were gone for our little Christmas road trip and now we're back and so we just got the hot tub hooked up with electricity and chemicals and the kids have been loving going in and and I as well um, but my daughter said I need a bathrobe to go out because um, she can be then she can put it around her and come in the house and be warm and cozy because it's cold getting out of the tub outside so that was sort of the inspiration for this as well as realizing I didn't have the fabric for the project that I had planned to make today so we're going to make a bathrobe because my daughter asked for it and you know those of you that sew and you might get similar requests anytime my kids need something they think I can magically create it and probably in the past I have magically created it a lot of the time but they pretty much think I can make anything and that they can ask for anything but we're I'm very blessed and thankful that a lot of times I can make their wishes come true and I can then I can use up fabric that I have around the house so over Christmas I just had my serger serviced so it's sewing even more beautifully than normal because it's all fresh and now we're getting all kinds of flannel in it um, and my cover stitch which so I took this to be serviced at just a local little fabric store um, not even a fabric store just kind of, they call themselves like a craft thrift store but there's a guy in the back room who services and so and he's pretty quick but he wouldn't do my cover stitch so I took my cover stitch to the brother dealer and they said it won't be back till mid February that was mid December so good thing the cover stitch is not something I sew. I need to sew I mean I made this whole sweatshirt without it it would have been great to have um, but I didn't need it so yeah we're I'm trying to get by without it and um, that's a long time I'm really glad I did not take my serger to the same place however I wish this guy could have done my cover stitch as well okay so the ends of the sleeves I'm going to finish with these binding strips that I cut so remember I cut two and a half inch strips of binding that we're going to put around the hood and everywhere to finish these raw edges of fabric if you use fleece you can be a lot less concerned about finishing all the raw edges because fleece won't fray so and you would actually have to size up quite as much either if you use fleece because most fleece does have some stretch in it as well so that would probably be one reason where I would say yeah this would be great to use with fleece plus fleece is super cozy um, but we're making a flannel robe here so I'm finishing both of the ends of the sleeves with the bindings here okay and then we are going to now sew up the side seams oh where's your shop at Leanna are you in the Denver area because it was in um, Wheat Ridge so I'm happy to I think it's called mr. mr. fix it but yeah he wasn't any cheaper than like at the dealer but he was definitely faster so if you're in this area yeah I would recommend it it was recommended to me by someone else from this area as well oh, okay so that would be a, probably a bit more of a drive for you but he does it in about a week I think so that's way faster than the dealerships are saying right now 
at least the one that I took my machine to was definitely way, way, way longer. If you don't have a serger, you're definitely going to want to um, sew all of these seams with a zigzag to try and keep the flannel from fraying. But if you don't have a serger, you probably know how you sew flannel and how you keep it from fraying. So you don't need me to tell you that. But um, flannel will fray when you wash it. Thus, my favorite frayed flannel blanket. Um, but so you just, you know, want to be aware of that if you're using your regular sewing machine for this project. But it can totally be done with it. This. I'm not making it with any stretch, so yeah, so I think it was Mr. Fix-It, but Lana, um, either if I don't post it, you can email me to the store. Actually, let me just tell you right now, the shop was called The Craft Box, so, um, and then he, this guy works out of it. So search The Craft Box in Wheat Ridge. It was right off 70, so it would be really easy. For you to find. Anyway, it was great. He was done in two weeks, and that was with Christmas and New Year's in there. So I thought that was really good, and I'm so happy to have it back. And now I will wait forever for my cover stitch to get back. So, yes, a French seam would also work. And I just noticed I lengthened my um, I lengthened my shirt, but I didn't really measure how I was lengthening it, and um, this side doesn't match up at all. So let's trim this a little bit. This is what happens when you mismatch fabric together. All right, so let's take a look at what we have. It is starting to come together and look like more of a robe. The sleeves I made plenty long so that I can roll them up if we need to. Um, but I'd rather have too long than too short. So here's what we have right now. We have the open front, right? So here's the open front. We have our bottom, which I added on before I even cut out the pattern pieces to be able to extend the shirt pattern. The arms finished with these bindings, which I've just flipped up to make a little cuff. And the next thing we're gonna do is add the hood and then from there we can finish the bindings around the rest of it. So let's take a look at the hood. This is my free hood add-on pattern that works with t-shirts, sweatshirts. I've used it with the kids raglan pattern. I've used it with the um, t-shirt pattern. So it's just an easy hood that you can make and add on to anything that you want. I recently used it. My son had a zip sweatshirt that didn't have a hood and he really wanted a hood on it. So I actually cut off the collar and used this pattern to add a hood and I lined it so both sides look nice. Um, so I cut four instead of just two. And um, so anyway, that was really, that was a fun use for it as well. So I'm going to find the center of the back and with right sides together, you're going to pin or clip your hood now to the neckline. And I think it's going to fit pretty well, but I have to, okay. So it looks like, let's see if we can ease it in a little bit. The hood might be a little bit short. I want it to kind of, um, 
come to the front of the neckline a little bit, I can trim that because we're going to put the binding all the way around, which will lengthen those front sides and give the hood a little bit of a finished edge as well. So we want it to kind of come out and meet um, approximately at the same edge. But you can also fudge it a little bit. All right, so there's our hood added on and pinned on. And we're going to sew the hood in place. So now we have a cute hood again, another mismatch of fabric that I'm adding on. Okay, so sleeves, hood, we're getting there. It's looking, I was able to cut the hood from the same fabric as the bottom, so it kind of goes together. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to um, sew a couple of these binding strips together so that when we're going around our bathrobe, I have enough to um, go around, okay? So I wanna be able to go up one side of the front, around the hood, and down the other side of the front. Um, all with one strip of binding. I think that looks long enough. Okay, so I'm going to start really on the bottom of one side and you're gonna fold your binding strip in half with the right sides out. And then we're simply going to sew it all the way around the front of the bathrobe. So right now I have three layers of fabric that I am sewing, two layers of this binding strip or this finishing strip and then one layer of the bathrobe. And we're gonna sew all the way up and around. And you can see here how the front is extending a little bit past the edge of the hood. I am gonna sort of cut that off and ease it into a straight line when I get to that point um, because I don't wanna do an angle. I want it to be a smooth line. So I'm just gonna angle and cut off a little bit of that front. So it wasn't much, you know, less than a half inch of cutting off and we have the full hood so I'm not concerned about it. I'm going back down the other side. Yay, using your new serger. That's what I love to hear. So let me know if you have any questions. Hopefully you're just getting really comfortable playing around with it. I think that's absolutely the best way to learn is to not be afraid and just try, try, try. And keep going. And if it's really giving you trouble, then just Close, you know, turn it off and leave it for the rest of the day. Sometimes 
our machines need a break, sometimes we need a break, and we just need to put it down and then we can come back to it. At least that's me, maybe that's not you, but sometimes that's what works for me. All right, so this is looking super good. So here's the robe, and I'll take a picture of Rose in this later and then post it in the group, okay? So the one thing, there are two more things I need to do. One, I need to finish um, the bottom, and we're just gonna do our binding again. You could also just turn up a hem if you wanted. Let me see if this is long enough. Um, and then I'm going to turn one of these strips that I already cut and um, make it into a tie. So that is long enough. <laughs> I know, Bonnie, I just get going and I go and I get going fast, but I also don't want to bore you, so I try to keep it moving. All right, so on the bottom, we have an edge that we want to be finished. So I just took my binding and with right sides together, I just sewed the edge. And now I'm going to flip it right side out. So now I have a finished edge on my binding and I can place that on this bottom corner here of the front facing. And we'll go around to the other side and then we'll go ahead and um, do the same thing on the other end when I get closer and I can see exactly where that's gonna be, okay? So, I credit, also give all the credit to my serger for being able to sew projects fast because it is so fast and easy. I don't have to finish the seams. It's already done for me. It, it is, I think it's so much faster than sewing on a sewing machine, but I usually do, many projects I do use both. You guys have seen me go back and forth, but this one in particular is a quick and easy project that can be made entirely on the serger if you're doing, if you don't hem and you do all of these bindings. If you wanna hem the sleeves or hem the bottom, then you have to get out your sewing machine but it still would be pretty quick and easy to also add, add that hem. So if you missed the beginning of the show, the sweatshirt that I'm wearing right now is going to be a brand new free sewing pattern available on my site starting Friday morning. So um, it's tunic length. It will come in sizes zero through 22, which um, I know it's not fully inclusive sizing, but it's what I have going right now and it's kind of where my patterns are. So it's been easy for me to put that together and I would love to work on, um, larger sizes in the future. So I just trimmed here the edge because now before I get to the very edge, I'm going to turn this wrong side out and sew those edges together so that I have that nice finished edge again. So anyway, if this sweatshirt looks like something that you would love, make sure you check out Life So Savory on Friday and download your copy of this free pattern. It is so comfortable. I've been wearing it all day and it's perfect for me to throw over my workout clothes in the morning after I finish my workout and then be able to um, carry on with my day, especially on those days when I'm not going to shower or um, get dressed right away. So some days, you know, I just um, change and move on and I don't have to worry about it, but I'm still wearing my workout pants from this morning, but I had this great sweatshirt to throw over and um, get on with my day. All right, so um, a couple more details to finish. That is these serger tails here. I'm tucking them into my seams so that I can clip it and don't have to worry about that fraying. 
and I will do the same thing on the edge of the sleeves. Hi, Diane. And so finishing those serger tails, and then we're going to create a um, waistband tie. And I'm trying to think about if I want to create belt loops or I might just stitch it on the back. Okay, and then she can pull it around and tie it and I don't have to worry about belt loops. So I think that's what I'm going to do. But let's create a sash first and then I'll show you the final back row result. So I happen to have, oh, I still have a couple more strips. Um, I don't know if that one is really long enough. So let's. I'm going to attach this piece to it. Um, so I just took these two and a half inch wide strips and folded them in half and sewed them on the bottom to create the hem. So that's what I made the hem out of was just more like a binding. Okay, so I'm going to, I don't know if I'll ever be able to, get this thing turned. It's long and narrow. I probably should have just sewed it on the outside and not worried about how it looked. <laughs> Sew this long side and then try to turn it right side out. I'll be mad at myself here that I thought this was a good idea. I'll have to get a knitting needle out of the cupboard. It is so windy here today, it's crazy. My whole house is like shaking with the wind. It's actually quite warm. The temperature is almost 60 degrees out, which is crazy for winter, but that wind does not make it nice to be out in. I ran some errands this morning and I was, my car door about got blown away. about as wide as a toothpick. And then I'm gonna sew across the bottom because I find it's usually easier to turn something if we have, if I have something to push up against. Okay, let me grab a knitting needle and see if, well, I wonder if I can do this. I just happen to have this dowel left over from a Christmas project and it's nice and long, but I don't know if it's too fat. So, see if I can use it to turn this fabric. I don't love getting turning started. Once I see, you can see, I know the trees are going like crazy and this is on the side of the house that's like fairly protected here. 40 degrees, burr. Sometimes I think I'd rather, I mean, generally the weather here is very nice and not, our winters are pretty mild, so. But we do get these windy days. What it's bringing is a cold front because tomorrow it'll be like 30 then compared to today when it's 60, it'll seem cold. All right, ladies, sorry. This is the part that you just, I can't make go fast even if I want to. I have to get it started pulling, pulling down. Should be able to get it here going where I can pull it a little bit better. Oh, oh, it's coming. Okay, Whew. I do not like turning things like this. All right, so I'm using this dowel. Just happened to be here, I made, some macrame air plant holders for some Christmas gifts and I used this dowel at the top. But now, can I pull it out or is it like <laughs> stuck on here? Whew, okay. Hey, 
here is my tie. I'm going to I think tie knots on the end of both because it's plenty long. And then I'm going to stitch it So we're going to push this machine out of the way and rotate this bad boy. So if you guys are familiar with me sewing, you know that I don't usually have this big machine um, up here. I usually keep it downstairs and I use it mostly for embroidery because it has a 8x12 hoop, which is lovely for... Um, bigger embroidery projects, but because my cover stitch is going to be in the shop for two months, I decided that I would bring it up and um, be able to play around with it a little more. So it's way fancier than my little guy over there that I'm used to sewing with. But, so it's been fun to play around with and um, try out some of the new features or different features. Yeah, it does. <laughs> okay, so let me take a look and see what we have here for the bathrobe. So here is the hood and the front that will cross over the sleeves. And I just sewed this onto the back so that hopefully you know, we can, got strings on it. So the bottom facing is flipping up, but once I, I find that once I wash that, it really uh, stays down much nicer. So there we go, pieced together kids bathrobe made with free sewing patterns. The arms look gargantuan. I'm thinking it's gonna be like way, way too long um but we just rolled the sleeves okay so there we go i will post a picture later today of rose um wearing it and hopefully yeah i think she will love it she's been asking for a bathrobe for a while and now with the hot tub outside it's perfect excuse to make one and um, I think she will love it. And also make sure you check back on Friday to get this sweatshirt free sewing pattern and get some fabric organized to make something fun. So I hope you enjoyed this. Next week I will be sewing, uh, <laughs> uh, cut off the sleeves, yep. I will be sewing the sack purse that I promised a couple weeks ago but then didn't have the fabric. So that will be next week's project. We'll make a fun purse. I'm gonna make it, I don't know, some wool or um, flannel, something cozy for winter so I can have kind of a fun bag to carry around. So that's my plan. I hope you will join me and I will see you next week. You guys are the best. Thank you for joining me and I'll see you next time. Bye.